Was ist das Lucy und Lucy und Sanna und Hushüse. Ja. Ja, 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 I chose a red jacket. So um, she says, Tainalt Arik is it? Idel Kosilchu. Just like Tainalt Ar, you chose a red jacket. And then she told me a story about Tainalt Ar. That's how we say it. It means Martin shake. Because she's feisty. Martin is a small animal. And um, when, when it's angered, is very feisty. So she has that characteristic. She's very bold, and even though she's small, she's very feisty. So anyways, Tainalt came into this story in Canada uh, over 300 years ago. She lived over 300 years ago, okay? And um, she was enslaved. She was enslaved by the Cree at that time. The Cree was uh, closer to the Hudson Bay in York factory. And um, so when I heard this story as a little girl, it's an oral story, right? But when I was in university, um, we were learning about First Nations, uh, native studies. And then there was um, a, a presentation we we're supposed to do about someone that lived before Confederation, when they, they signed the Confederation, 1867. So, we're all looking for our heroes, like our Tucumsey, uh, Joseph Brandt, um, Big Bear, and the list goes on, right? I still didn't know who I was going to write about. And then um, there's a, a, a part in, um, in the book, only about this big, uh, a paragraph. And then I read it. And then I dealt there, and I kept reading, and as I was reading, I say, ding, ding, ding in my head. And I said, hey, wait a minute, this sounds familiar. So since 94 to this day, I keep telling her story. I want our people to know about it because you need to know your past. You need to know your history to, to be a strong nation, to be a strong woman. You need that. So I keep telling a story. And as an educator, I do that to my students. And then um, I introduce the Red Day because on February 5, 1717, is the day she died. That's a known date we have. It's documented in the Hudson Bay Company journals. It's a big book like this. She was kidnapped. She was missing. Her whole family was slaughtered. And just the two of them were survived. She was in, uh, like 15, 16 years old. But the reason why this, she was the only one that survived and the other girl is because she was very beautiful. So she was amongst the, the Cree enslaved. And she learned to speak Cree. So now she's got Denny and she's got Cree. And then um, they escaped one, one year in about November. Okay, they escaped in November and they were going back north. This is before the borders became borders. This is before Manitoba, before even Canada became Canada, okay? This is 306 years ago, okay? 307 years ago. Anyways, they escaped back north to their people. One of them died, so she knew she couldn't survive by herself because it's during the Little Ice Age. So she turned back, and then she stumbled amongst goose hunters. You hear the goose? That's why. Because she's amongst us, the goose hunting. They took her back to the Hudson Bay Company. It's a little uh, fort that was in York Factory. So, and then the governor at that time, James Knight, thought, hmm, old man, old man, white guy, we need her. She speaks Cree, she speaks Denny. We need her because we can have trade with the, the Denny people. The Hudson Bay Company James, James Knight, the governor, 
hired her basically to be an interpreter, to be a guide, to be um, to make peace with the Cree and the Dene. So she said, well, I have to go back up there. We have to bring gifts to them. I have to talk to my people to make that peace. They walked from York Factory, Manitoba, no Manitoba yet, but York Factory. They walked all the way to close to Baker Lake. And that's where her people were. But before they got to her people, they were the encampment there of Denny people, slaughtered again by the Cree. So the Cree that were coming with them, there was about 115 men and women that came with them. They were, they said, oh, we can't go any further because we could get killed too, right? So they made a fort. She said, you stay here. I'll come back for you. 10 days. I'll be gone 10 days. This is in, in around February, March during a little ice age. Can you imagine a 16-year-old walking by herself in the cold up north? She trekked on into the dark. She wanted to look for her people. How did she know? How did she know she was going to be back in, on the 10th day? She's a visionary. She's a mathematician. She's an astrologist. She was following the stars to get to her people. Mm -hmm. On the 10th day, lo and behold, she came back. She lost her voice in the journals. It says she lost her voice because of making, uh, negotiating peace between the Dene and the Cree. Because these are ancient rivalries, right? They're always killing each other back and forth. But she said, we have to make peace. Yes, we lived like this for a long time, but now we have to make peace. So February 5 is the day she died. So upon learning about her from my parents, upon learning from her about in the books, and then be becoming a teacher later on, I in turn tell her story to the students. And then I started the movement of wearing red on February 5. But she is very important to us. She's a very strong woman, a teenager, and she has survived the elements. And she was thinking for our future as women, not only just the Denny girls, not just the Denny people, but as a nation of indigenous people. 